ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهديه الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون أما بعد All praise is due to Allah We praise him abundantly the way he deserves to be praised and we bear witness that there is no God that deserves any worship except Allah. He is alone, he has no partners. And we bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave and his messenger. We ask Allah to exalt his mention and grant him peace and send his salutations and his blessings upon him and upon his companions and wives and all those who follow them on the path of righteousness until the day of judgment. All you who have believed, be mindful of Allah and fear Him the way He deserves to be feared and do not die except in the state of submission as Muslims. Brothers in faith, Allah Azza wa Jal teaches us in the Quran to obey Allah, to obey Him and obey His Messenger. أَطِيعُوا اللَّهِ وَأَطِيعُوا الرَّسُولِ وَأُولِي الْأَمْرِ مِنْكُمْ After Allah mentioned the obligation of obeying him and then obeying his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he also mentioned to obey the people in charge. Obeying the rulers. People think Everything is political. Failing to realize that these are theological matters. The area of how to deal with the people in charge in whichever country you reside is a matter of religion. It is not a personal matter or a cultural matter or a social matter or a private matter. It's a religious matter. And if it is a religious matter, then it is not up to our own whims and desires to act as we like. We have codes, we have rules, regulations, guidelines by which we move, by which we speak, by which we react. Failure in doing so, which is the condition of most Muslims today, brings about calamities of the highest magnitude because of the widespread of ignorance and the enslavement of people to their own opinions and ideas and the false perception of brave people among us who are afraid of nothing but Allah who in reality are not even afraid of Allah had they been afraid of Allah they would have obeyed him regarding this subject matter as well There's a fine line between being a devout worshipper of Allah and being a dog from the dogs of the hellfire. Mark my words and listen carefully to what I'm saying. I know this is shocking. There's a fine line between being a devout worshipper to Allah and being a dog from the dogs of the hellfire. Because at the time of the Prophet وسلم, came a man when the Prophet was distributing the war booty after one of the expeditions, he said to him, Ya Muhammad, i'din, fa'innaka lam ta'din. O Muhammad, be fair and just in your distribution, because you have not been fair. The Prophet said, Wayhak, woe to you. Who will be fair if I'm not fair? Allah entrusted me with revelation. Who will be fair if I'm not fair? One of the Sahaba wanted to finish 
mention. Because this is going against the messenger of Allah and this is disbelief. Accusing him of, of treachery and lies. He said, leave him. Because the Prophet ﷺ was merciful and it wasn't about bloodshed. But they were coming from his loins, from this guy. There will be many like him. Now he's saying this to the Sahaba. If you were to compare your prayer to their prayer, your fasting to their fasting, you will see yourself as nothing. You will belittle your act of worship compared to theirs. And they will read the Quran more than you would do. But it will not go beyond their collarbone. It will not go to the heart. They will leave Islam just like the arrow leaves when you throw it and it doesn't go back to the bow. And he said, if I were to be alive when they become widespread, then I will handle them the way Allah handled the people of Ad. Complete removal. This was a man who had that attitude. And he is the father of the Khawarij, the Kharijites, one of the most dangerous and devious sects in Islam, deviant sects in Islam up until today. Those are the same people that are out there killing masses of people, Muslims, non-Muslims, everybody. Everybody's halal for them. Every, every blood is permissible for them to spill. And we are suffering at their hands. And the Muslims now that are innocent are suffering as a byproduct and a reaction to their extremism. Now you cannot be in the UK without someone throwing acid in your face, even though you did nothing. But because some funny guy from us did something stupid, now they're doing something stupid. And the end result is more Muslims now suffer because of these individuals. The worst of people, the dogs of the hellfire. They will have the appearance. They will have the acts of worship. But it's a fine line like I told you between that and between being a dog from the dogs of the hellfire. And one of their main traits, they have many. Their fundamental trait is going against the rulers and the people in charge. This is their number one thing. And people are unaware of the narrations of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in regards to this subject matter of the deed. They are unaware, this complete unawareness. When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever will live after me, you will see, you will see changes and things which you will dislike. They said, what should we do, O Messenger of Allah? Meaning in regards to those in charge. He said, give them their rights and ask Allah for yours. Give them their rights and ask Allah for yours. He said, if, if someone turns away from obedience to the people in charge, then he will meet Allah with no valid excuse on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. He will meet Allah with no valid excuse for this disobedience. And whoever dies without having sworn allegiance to the people in charge will die the death of a jahiliyyah, like a person from the time of ignorance as if he had no Islam. As long as there are Muslims, all of these are binding on all of us. And it is not a matter of politics, it's a matter of religion. We do not say this because we're scared or because someone gave us money or because someone is saying, say this to the people. Wallahi, and Allah is my witness. We say this because this is a matter of the deen. Because it's an obligation on us to remind each other about these rights. Even if they were disbelievers, you're not allowed to go against them unless you have the ability to do so. And all these Muslims in all these countries, who thought they had the means to do it, had absolutely no means. And what did they achieve? Absolutely nothing. All of these countries where these revolts happen are complete chaos. And Syria is still bleeding until today.
they're getting crushed. Because that's not how it works. Our religion never worked this way, this chaotic way. You come, we all come together, we make a little clan, and then we go out, we want to do it, all this nonsense. Then all these groups come in who don't agree with each other. No one knows what's going on anymore. No one knows who's fighting who. What we know is people are dying. Our religion doesn't work this way. And when we violate the ways of the Prophet ﷺ, this will be the end result and the ramifications. We are told to be patient, be patient. In one hadith, even if he slapped your back, even if the ruler came and, and, and lashed you and said, give me, give me money. You give him money and you ask Allah for your right. This is the messenger of Allah وسلم, speaking. If you have a problem with that, then I am innocent of it and you will deal with Allah on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. This is not my opinion. These are the words of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because he knew, he knew what would happen if we were not to go by these rules. And I'm saying this in connection with the current affairs. The current affairs of the fees and independence fees and what have you. Where everybody now is a political uh, analysis gives his own analysis of the political situation, what should be done, what shouldn't be done, this is okay, this is not okay, and then in the process, backbiting the rulers, speaking ill about them, degrading them, belittling them, Ya Sheikh, Ya Sheikh, that's a heavy weight on your back on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. What do you want? It's a simple equation. You like it, Hayak Allah. You don't like it, pack and leave. It's a very simple thing. I want to see what you will get in other countries. We've lived in other countries. We know what it's like to pay taxes, income taxes, based on how much you make. Do you think the rest of the world is just going to give you these open arms? Everywhere you go, they have rules and regulations based on their situation. We've been enjoying this, the, the khair in this country for how long? Have some shame. How long we make money, we send money. We make money, we send money. You eat, uh, mashallah, a big dinner for two riyals. You have a breakfast for three riyals. As little as that if you want. And now when there's an economic crisis, which you can see before your eyes, and there's a need to make certain decisions which don't concern us and from a political point of view, everybody's gonna complain? If you don't like it, it's understandable. Don't get me wrong. Do you think anyone is going to be happy to pay an extra riyal? La wallah. We're human beings. Greedy. Nobody wants to pay an extra riyal for sure. But when we dislike something, we have a sunnah. You dislike it with your heart. Or as the Prophet ﷺ said, if one of you has an advice for the person in charge, let him take him on his side and give him that advice in privacy. Don't make it public. If he accepts it, alhamdulillah, if not, you have done your job. But to go on different forums and Facebook and Twitter and everybody's complaining, you are in fact helping against Islam and the Muslims. In other countries, the taxes they pay, they go to their military power who wind up killing the Muslims. At least here you can have an intention that inshallah, it was still circulating among brothers and sisters in faith. And these might be measures that have to be taken. We have teachings from Islam that tell us how to behave. We've had worse, way worse conditions in the past with our Imams. At the time of Imam Ahmad, rahimahullah, when the ruler of that time insisted that the Quran was created. That the Quran is not Kalamullah, it is not the speech of Allah, it's the creation of Allah like you and I. And this is a very dangerous statement or belief to hold. And the people want the fuqaha to Imam Ahmad. What, what should we do about this? We need to do something about this. This guy cannot be our leader. He refused. He said, don't. Don't divide the Muslims. Don't spread and don't cause bloodshed among the Muslims. And be patient until Allah changes the affairs. 
This is what we learned from our, from our predecessors. So at these times, when we face certain difficulties, we have etiquettes, etiquettes of behavior. Number one, don't speak much. Either you have something to say, good to say, as the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, Either say something good or, or be quiet, brother. Just be quiet. Don't carry sins on your back that you don't need. You have to understand, when you speak in this negative manner, you are backbiting the people in charge, who are known to everybody. You're backbiting them. This is a sin in Islam. And it becomes multiplied because you're not just backbiting anybody, you're backbiting the rulers. And the rulers have their own set of rules in Islam. When Hudayfa was worried about the end of time, and that there would be a lot of differences, the Prophet ﷺ told them, عَلَيْكَ بِجَمَاعَةِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ وَإِمَامَهُمْ Look for where the majority of the Muslims are in the Imam. Stick to them. Just stick to them. We are living in difficult times everywhere in the world. If we accepted this thing with benevolence, with decency, Allah will make a way out for us. وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهِ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا if Allah has a decree for you to stay in this place, you will find a way to pay this money. It is not the greatest amount of money in the world. It requires less spending, more savings, fine. We manage. People, other countries are struggling to eat. They're struggling to find a roof over their heads. Muslims all over the world don't know where their family members are. We are in big khair here. <coughs> and even then we want to criticize and speak ill is unacceptable, is completely unacceptable. We should know our limits, brothers. Know our limits. This is mercy from Allah to us. You make dua for these people, that Allah rectify our affairs and theirs. Allah guide us and guide them. This is from the way of the Prophet wasallam. It keeps that harmony, it keeps that mercy and compassion. And we've seen many examples where certain rules were put and then they were changed according to the situation. It's not the end of the world. But before we go to the second khutbah, I would like to reiterate and remind, this is not a social matter, this is a religious matter. So every reaction has to be calculated according to the rules of Islam. And each one of us is either sinful or he will be rewarded. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد Brothers in faith As time progresses and as we approach the end of time the expectation is that things will continue to get worse this is what we've been promised by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam until when things will change completely towards goodness. That's towards the end of time and one of the major signs of Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Until then, the expectation is matters will get worse. And if we react incorrectly, we will be hastening the evil which is coming. And if we act and react properly according to the sunnah, we will be able to tame the situation and keep it under control so that at least we can be saved in our children. The Prophet wasallam said, and these are again from the clear-cut narrations, لا تسبوا أمراءكم Do not verbally abuse the people in charge. وَلَا تَغُشُّوهُمْ And do not cheat them. Do not deceive them. We're guilty. We're guilty. The second one. We're guilty. وَلَا تُبْغِدُوهُمْ And don't hate them. We're guilty. 
إلا من رحم الله واتقوا الله and fear Allah because verily really the matter is near the matter of Yawm Al-Qiyamah is near and he's saying this Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam knowing that people like Al-Hajjaj bin Yusuf was at some point in charge of the Muslims whose hobby was to kill Muslims wholesale the elite, the ulama, the fuqaha, the most senior of people, it's, it was his hobby to capture them, torture them, and kill them. And yet, those same people would not go against them and fight and rebel and run their mouth like people do today. Why, by Allah's grace and mercy, we are living in peace and security. You want to go to Mecca, you get in your car, drive 45 minutes, you have Alhamdulillah, Al-Haram, to do your Tawaf and Ibadah, come back with a peace of mind. And all types of things are done to protect us from maniacs who want to go blow themselves up in the house of Allah. What else do we want, Ya Akhwan? Do you, why did we leave our countries anyways? Why did we come here? Because it's better than where we were. By default, it is better. No one is going to leave his homeland and go live in a foreign land if his homeland was better, if the situation was better. It's common sense. Otherwise, if someone loves his homeland so much, Habibi, get an air flight and fly back. No one is going to be mad. Actually, this fitna is going to clean out those who are not sincere about staying here. A lot of us are staying here because we believe this is still, in spite of the challenges, the best environment to live as a Muslim. It remains to be the best environment. It's not perfect. It's not the top of the Sahaba. We don't expect it to be. 1400 years after the message of Allah, we don't. Right after the Sahaba, the fitan began. began. At the time of the Sahaba, the fitan. The, the tribulations began. Do you want it to be now at the time of the Sahaba 1400 years later? You must be out of your mind. But it remains to be the best place. Alhamdulillah. So those who are sincere, they will make it happen. And those who are quick to judge will leave. They can leave. No one is preventing us from leaving. Whether they will regret this late years later, Allahu A'lam. But no one is forcing us. It's a matter of choice that you have. You can afford it. Some people cannot afford it. We understand even if they want it to, they cannot afford it. We say, Qaddar Allah wa ma This is the Qadr of Allah. So one of us is forced. I would use forced to go back home, but we go back home with decency, with appreciation. That's the, that's the behavior of a Muslim. Someone, let's say someone was helping you for 20 years, then they fail in helping you for one month, you forget all the good? And you talk bad about them, and you belittle them, and you humiliate them? Absolutely not, ya akhi. Show some decency. If one of us is unable to cope with the situation from a financial point of view, Alhamdulillah, at least, at least, may preserve your tongue. Protect your tongue from running and saying things that you will not be able to deal with on your Qiyamah. It's a huge, huge responsibility. Because when one of us does, he has directly went against the Messenger of Allah والسلام, who said, Do not verbally abuse the people in charge. This is a command from the Messenger of Allah. So we say, We listen and we obey. You have something to say, find out the information for the people in charge, send them an email, send them a letter, go over there to the Amara and speak your mind. You will be allowed to do so by the way. You want, you have a point of view about the social situation, financial situation, you think the solution is in your hand, go give them advice. Jazakallah khair. But there's no benefit in putting this on Twitter. Or on Facebook, or when you go in the family gatherings, all we do is talk about it, talk about it, talk. Sins, 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 just circulating among us, on our backs. And then we leave, what did you achieve? Nothing, akhi. Did they hear you? Did they change anything? No, habibi. What did you gain? Nothing. Nothing, except sins. The worst thing that you can gain. 
This is the formula then. We are patient. We try, we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to alleviate the difficulty upon the Muslims. We, we, this is, this is the relationship of the slave with his Lord because the matter is in Allah's hands. The matter is in Allah's hands. But if we want facilitation from Allah while we are disobeying regarding this, uh, this matter, how do we expect facilitation? It's logic, ya akhwan. These are the tests that Allah gives us creation. Allah is the one who legislated how you deal with these people in charge. He told you in the Quran, Ati'u, obey uli al-amri minkum, the people in charge. It's not up to me and you. So we disobey him in this regard. And then we, we expect facilitation. The equation doesn't add up, ya akhi. Rather, we obey Allah regarding what he told us. And we make dua to him to change the affairs. And Allah Azza wa Jal, biyadi al khair. In his hands is all good. And he honors whomever he wills, and he humiliates whomever he wills, and he does whatever he wills. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is the time to return to Allah, not disobey him regarding this calamity. And verily with difficulty comes ease. And with difficulty comes ease. Allahumma ya muqallib al qulub thabbit qulubana ala deenik rabbana la tuzil qulubana ba'da idh hadaytana wa hab lana min ladunka rahmatan innaka anta al wahab rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al akhirati hasana wa qina adhab al nar Allahumma aslih lana deenana alladhi huwa ismatu amrina wa aslih lana dunyana alladhi fiha ma'ashina wa aslih lana akhiratana alladhi ilayha ma'aduna wa ja'al al hayata ziyadatan lana fi kulli khair والموت راحة لنا من كل شر ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين واجعلنا للمتقين إماما اللهم أصلح شأن المسلمين وأمورهم ووفق ووفقهم لما تحب وترضاه من القول والعمل اللهم لا تؤاخذنا بما فعل السفهاء منا اللهم ارحمنا برحمتك واغفر لنا ذنوبنا كبيرها وصغيرها يا ذا الجلال والإكرام اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد أقيم الصلاة